So I recently became aware of this absolutely insane headline and article from the Huffington Post, which suggests that people who are speaking out against the potential dangers of vaccines, namely a fast-track COVID-19 vaccine, they should be dealt with in the same way that we would deal with terrorists. So what I'm going to do in this very short video is I'm going to dismantle their propaganda and show you that they are being extremely deceptive. So they interview this guy, Professor Peter Hotz. He's supposed to be like a leading advocate for vaccines. This is Dr. Peter Hotez, a vaccine scientist and one of the leading voices fighting vaccine disinformation. And in this interview, he makes the very false suggestion that in the past 70 years, there have been nothing but good and safe vaccines produced. It's an amazing, you know, 70 year track record of releasing safe and effective vaccines to the public. 70 year track record of releasing safe and effective vaccines to the public. Now, as I'm going to show you in this publication, which has been peer reviewed, which is why I chose it, entitled Deaths Following Vaccination, What Does the Evidence Show? That is verifiably false, guys. Two of the incidents that they mentioned, which I decided to use because they were also fast-tracked, was the Qatar incident in 1955. And what took place over here was 51 cases of permanent paralysis and five deaths among vaccinated individuals, and then 113 cases of paralysis and five deaths among contacts of vaccinated individuals. The other example is the mandatory 1976 swine flu vaccine campaign, in which there were dozens of deaths that we know about, and then there were a couple hundred incidents of Guillain-Barre syndrome as well. That vaccine campaign resulted in more people dying than died from the actual disease. They take it a step even further by insinuating and suggesting that people who are pro-vaccine and pro-lockdown, they are being muzzled and censored by the evil anti-vaxxers. And while the anti-vax movement attempts to muzzle those on the front lines, the anti-vax movement attempts to muzzle those on the front lines. Now that suggestion is just so delusional that it could justifiably be called insane. Because everybody that is not living under a rock at this point knows that the people being censored and silenced and muzzled are not people who are pro-vaccine and pro-lockdown, it's the people who are challenging these lockdowns and challenging the potential dangers of a fast-track vaccine. We see, for example, yeah, these Italian doctors who were, and I quote, disciplined for their anti-vaccination propaganda. Newt Wotowski, an epidemiologist, he was censored off of YouTube for challenging the lockdowns. Likewise, this Nobel Prize winning biophysicist, Michael Levitt, he was uninvited from being a keynote speaker for his views on the so-called pandemic. Then we also know about the Bakersfield doctors, same thing happened with them, where YouTube went ahead and removed their video. And then more recently, yeah, the governor of Florida, who I don't know his politics, so I'm not trying to get into that, but he had a roundtable discussion with actual experts, physicians and scientists that were challenging the lockdown narrative, and they were also censored, which is just absolutely insane. So I don't know what galaxy, what reality, what world the Huffington Post is existing and living in, but it's certainly not this one. And then to top off that delusional propaganda, they go ahead and make that ridiculous suggestion that people who are challenging the narrative on these fast-track vaccines, they be dealt with as terrorists. We need to treat anti-science movements in the same way that we, we tackle uh, terrorism. We need to treat anti-science movements in the same way that we we tackle uh, terrorism. Now, let me be very clear here, guys. The moment you find yourself siding with the big pharma vaccine industry, which has a well-documented history of bribing doctors and medical officials all throughout the world, an industry that has a history of experimenting on innocent civilians and even babies to the point that some have even died, an industry that has been caught red-handed selling products that they knew to be dangerous and deadly to the point that they have even been charged with manslaughter and murder. And an industry that very ironically are currently being investigated for helping to fund terrorism. The moment that you side with that industry against people who history shows have every right to be concerned with the potential danger of a fast-track vaccine, the moment that you do that, you're not fighting against some great evil and danger as the Huffington Post would like you to believe. No, the moment that you do that, you are actually fighting for what could be called evil, and you have become the threat and danger to society. A 
I'm trying to free your mind, Neo. 